Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we're going to look at NetBees. NetBees is a neat little company with neat little tools that I think you will enjoy. So let's uh, jump right into this thing. So what is it? It's um, based around these tactical tools. Sometimes I need tactical tools. I don't need a full-blown network management system. I just need something specific and I need to record those results, right? So NetBees, for example, provides these Raspberry Pi devices or software. Uh, again, that's just one example or virtual agents or software and they try to record a more accurate perspective from the user's experience. So you put these devices or software on the client's network or the client's computer and you can actually do more testing to them. Um, I use the free virtual appliance which I, I'll be honest with you up until two months ago I didn't even know they offered a free option which is pretty nice and you'll find it here on this link and the link will be in the write-up so you can just click on that and, and go check it out and the free version supports one agent three targets, one user, cloud server account, SMTP alerts, and one week of data storage. So for just testing or doing the odd little troubleshooting example, that's perfect. And then you can find out if it fits within your environment from there. So what can I do with it? I just copy and pasted the feature set here. Um, I've tested the ping, TCP based ping, so it doesn't use ICMP, that's a big deal. DNS, HTTP, uh, I've done articles on Traceroute already and iperf as well. So I've used quite a few options on this. It works as advertised, which is pretty nice. And uh, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I, I can't say that enough. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I need to point out is I found out just by accident, Internet Explorer is not supported. So one of the machines I used this on, when I tried to access the dashboard, it had IE as a default browser. And of course, NetBees promptly popped up and said IE is not supported, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, are currently supported that sort of thing so just so you know now when you try to set these up right at the top of your dashboard there's going to be um, you know what here let me just show you so at the top of your dashboard you can see here let me just center that there you go you've got targets here and tests over here it's kind of important to know uh, the difference so we've got for example the test you can see there's my iperf test results for example if I go to targets, I'll see my targets, which is going to be that, that virtual client is testing to, in this case, Google is what I called it. And I've got ping tests, I've got DNS tests, and all this kind of stuff is there as well. So back to this. So when you add a resource, you just basically tell it what you want to hit. In this case, I did google.com. Uh, you could obviously put a local IP address if you want to hit something local. And then you've got your ping, DNS, HTTP, whatever, all the tests you want to do, you can either delete them or you can modify them as well. But the point of this one is if you do hit this cog, right, this gear, this spiny star thingamajiggy, you can actually see the settings, right? So you'll see that in another screen. So when you go to, uh, for example, HTTP, you put google.com and you hit the little cog, you'll see that there's your get interval, 60 seconds is the default. You can change that to five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want just don't get carried away don't make it like every second right that's kind of not helpful unless that's what you really want to do and your timeout value so you can go in and do a certain amount of customization as well below it you've got an alert configuration and that alert configuration area is basically going to say hey after five con consecutive failed tests for ping well it's going to be an alert and the alert can be anything from a little red box. Again, I'll just bring this up for you. So this little red box, right? That's going to be like your failed tests or alerts um, all the way to these reports. So you can see an alert timeline below here. So if things exceed that or trip that threshold, then you would see it noted at the bottom of that screen. So from there, um, I wanted to do an iperf, right? Because a lot of times I want to figure out performance. It doesn't matter if it's Wi-Fi wired. It doesn't matter. Right? I want to find out how fast things are going. So I created a scheduled iperf test. Now the point here is it's scheduled, right? So I don't have to worry about using Microsoft's task scheduler or anything like that. This is uh, basically using its scheduler. So from there, I select my agent. And the bottom part of the screen, I can select protocol, default, default. I'm just doing everything default, make life easy. And here's a little bit of a note. On the schedule test side of it, as you pick the times, they'll go blue. They'll kind of highlight, right? They'll go blue. Well, as you click other times, they will also go blue. So if you don't pay attention, as I did at one point, you might select 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and, you know, lose track of what you're doing. And that's why it's kind of important to pay attention to that, that summary line. It'll tell you all the times that it's testing 
in this case iperf. So if I take a look at the results, you can click on any one of those tests and see what the results are like. There's also a reporting engine as well if you want to see things a little bit clearer and a little more professional. And you can see in this case my HTTP response time went over two seconds around 11.49-ish. You can see that, see? And now I can go back and correlate it with uh, trace routes or pings or iperfs and see if it was more of a network-wide issue, HTTP only issue, or is it only with one server, that kind of stuff, right? So it's a nice graphical way of working your way through a problem. Now, if you want to review, uh, for example, the iperf results, as I showed you on that previous one, you can go through uh, the report, but it's kind of nice to keep in mind what you did for that test. So I, a lot of times I will actually do a screenshot just like this, just to remember what I was doing. Uh, and that way you'll know what the time was for that. Is this, you can see, look, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So, you know, I got a little carried away here, right? But it's kind of nice to know that's what I did. Um, the other thing about this is I did this test on my, uh, through my Wi-Fi connection. Most of the time it was around 30 some odd megabits per second, but right around here, right around noon-ish, it dropped. Why? Well, somebody was using the microwave. So people still don't understand, depending on your location, the access points location, the microwave, all that kind of stuff, it could cause some negative impact on your network. If you want to go a step further, there's also a whole reporting side of it. So this is an example of a report for that test I called Google. And you'll see the ping, DNS, HTTP, and traceroute. You can compare all of those values in one fell swoop just to make life easy for you. So this is a, again, you can get the software, it's free, you Get it's an OVA file, you can run it in a like VMware player, that's what I'm doing with it. Um, run it in whatever virtual software you want to use, you can play with it all you want, see how it fits, see how you like it, and then if you do like it, well then you can take the next step and you might consider buying something. All right, folks? So hope that helps. Uh, worst case scenario, you can play with it and in your environment and figure out some stuff that you may be plaguing you for the last little while. Have a good day. Bye for now.